Hi everyone, I'm Julie Farmer. Thanks for joining me here at Harmony Yoga. This is the fourth try for this video. Um, so I have um, more patience than I thought I would have at this point. I figured out what the problem was. Um, so here we go. This class today, we're gonna to talk about power versus force. And um, I've got a couple props with me here today that I'd like to tell you about, and then you can pause the video and go gather what you like. So I'm gonna start out with my hips up on a little bolster here. That's really what feels most comfortable for me. Um, but also I've got a block and then I've got this chair. So let me start out and show you um, with the chair, sitting your hips to the front, letting the low back come in, lifting the heart. And this might be your posture right here. I've got the block here, so if I needed it for my short legs, that might feel more comfortable. Or maybe the floor is good for you. If I sit down onto the block, notice now I still have the low back coming in, the heart lifted, the spine elongated, but by sitting my hips here, I can sit crossed ankled and my knees more naturally come to the floor than if I sat um, on the floor directly. So maybe you can notice now here, um, I start to flatten in the back and my knees are popping up, but the bolster can do similar to the block, it's just not quite as high. But if you notice, I'm shifting myself forward off the fold of the blanket. So the blanket is pulling the flesh back so that my back still curves and my knees are now, if you notice, now my knees are closer to the earth. So pick a spot that feels good for you. And the reason I'm giving you some options today with some extra props is that um, I wanted to do this class for, um, for those that are pregnant in any trimester. What I've done is, is gotten rid of all of the poses that would be a potential issue in one of the three trimesters. And, but yet this class is appropriate for anybody, whether you're pregnant or not. So um, find a comfortable spot to sit and let's just bring our energy into this space so we can become present, um, kind of letting go of the trappings of the day. And um, if your day had some extra um, aggravation or stress because we're back from the holidays to work, um, just see if you can let that go and come back to that place of um, <laughs> the holidays where you felt really at peace, maybe without a lot of pressure. However, maybe the, the holidays were a little extra pressure for you as they sometimes are. Um, see if you can bring yourself into that present moment and be in a state of acceptance for whatever you might be feeling today. And as your eyes are closed and you're breathing, think about that space right under your rib cage and right above your belly button. That's the solar plexus area where your personal power comes from. So I've noticed like if I'm struggling to pedal a bicycle uphill, if I really plug into that power center, I feel like I'm energized to continue pedaling or walking or running or whatever it might be. So think about that as you breathe in, as if you're breathing into that space of your solar plexus. And then exhale from that space. As you continue in that fashion, I wanna bring up the topic of power versus force. So our power really radiates out from this place inside of us. And if you think of a powerful person that you have learned from in your life, feel how your body responds to the simple thought of that person. And then shift your awareness to a forceful person. Where there's force, there is a counter force and it feels forceful, maybe a little restrictive, a little rigid. But think of a forceful person that you know and then listen to how your body responds to that. Perhaps you don't feel quite so open. So we want to treat our yoga practice powerfully, not forcefully. With grace and love and unity, synchronicity, all of those things invoke this inner power, this inner beauty. And I know for some people that's very counterintuitive to things that we've learned through athletics or um, through achievement-based philosophies. Yoga is counterintuitive in that way or counter 
cultural, I should say, more so, because sometimes the messages we get from our culture um, really go against our inner voice and where are we learning to listen. So bringing that awareness inside, feeling how you feel. That's why I offer you three different spots to sit today so that you can feel how your body feels, follow your own intuition, follow your own body's voice, sit where it feels comfortable. Bringing your hands together in front of the heart and bowing toward an intention that's meaningful for you today, whether it's offering this um, prayers, blessings, good intentions, good energy, whatever you might call that to somebody in need. Perhaps even offering that to yourself if today has been one of those days that you just need a little extra encouragement. Just turn that energy back on yourself so you can offer yourself a blessing. And ultimately, when we come back to that state of balance, we are more present and meaningful to people around us. So it's not a selfish thing. Go ahead, when you're ready, release your hands, open your eyes, and let's come to a standing position. So if you are pregnant, feel free to use that chair to help you come up to standing. And then we wanna bring our feet parallel, hips width apart, toes facing forward, and inhale, lift up, bring the arms up, and exhale, bend the knees, sweep the arms in front. Don't going at the pace of your own breath. So you may be off sync with what I'm doing right now, but you're gonna follow your breath. And start to synchronize the breath with the movement and bringing that awareness inside. The next time you come down on the exhale and inhale up, we're gonna stay up and pushing down through both feet equally, lean over to the right. Elongating the whole side of the left body, inhaling up to the center and exhaling over to the other side. On your next inhale, come back to the top. Bring your hands down to your knees, inhale, lift the heart, look up, and exhale, scoop the tailbone under, round the upper back and look inward. And we'll go back and forth here. We'll go one more. Good, and then coming to the front of your mat, inhale, lift your arms up to the sky and exhale. We're gonna come to a half forward fold, whether on a chair, on a block, or perhaps you can come into a full forward fold with your hands on the floor. But first thing you may find that chair feels really good. Just inhale, again, lift and exhale, lower, maybe only halfway down. Maybe you find you can crawl your hands down, but notice if you were reaching, forcing yourself down into a forward fold that your body's not quite ready for, you're gonna be counterproductive here. So force doesn't really work in this practice. Good, working your way back up. And then we're gonna come into a downward facing dog. So I'm gonna show you here on the chair, pretend this chair is backed up against the wall so it's not gonna slide away. Stepping your feet back, lifting your hips up, and in, taking the inner thighs back. So you can do that on a chair if the chair is supported on the wall. I'm gonna bring my hands down to the mat and step myself back to a down dog here on the mat. And in either case, you can start to bend one leg and bend the other, just to start uh, lengthening, opening up the tissues in the lower leg, even in the feet. Good, bring your, let's do your left foot up toward the front of your mat. And in this case, I'm gonna put my left foot underneath the chair and swivel my right foot down. With the left hand on the chair, straighten both legs, reaching the top arm up to the sky for triangle. Now to move from power in this posture is to push down into the feet Feel that ground you and stabilize you. And then from the left lung, rotate yourself, even look up to the sky. Unless that doesn't feel good for your neck, you can still rotate the torso 
and have the hand look or the head look down to the hand. So you're going to listen to the body here. Maybe the top hand's on your hip, right? Now bend into that front leg. Your hand can stay on the chair. Forearm can come to the thigh or you can reach down to the block. Again, the left lung rotates up to the sky. You can even look up. Right hand can reach to the sky or over the ear. These standing postures are actually hip openers as well. Bending into the left knee again, open the arms out to warrior two. So you kind of cartwheel your arms up or work your way up. If you have the chair there or your, you can use your knee, come upright and then straighten the front leg, make your feet parallel and come down into a wide legged forward fold using your chair, using your block, or you can walk your hands out in front. Walk yourself around to your right leg. Toes turn out to the short end of your mat. Hand to the chair, to the block, or to the floor. Both legs are straight. Reach the left arm up to the sky. It can stay on the hip if that feels better. And remember, we're rotating from the inside now. The whole, the organs on the right side start to rotate up toward the sky. Pushing down through the ball of the big toe on the right foot helps protect that knee. And you can bend into the right knee with your hand on the block, the chair, or the forearm onto the thigh. Get the arm overhead, over the ear, or on the hip. So you've got options there. Listen to the body. Move the hips back, scoop that tailbone and send the energy down both legs. Feel yourself expand as you revolve toward the sky. And then keeping that left or the right knee bent, shift your hips back, scoop the tailbone, arms out, looking over the right hand for warrior two. Nice job, make the feet parallel. Let's come into a wide-legged forward fold again. Using any prop that feels right for your body, lifting the sitting bones up toward the sky. And then walk yourself back to your chair or to the wall. So I'm gonna pretend that this is the wall here I'm going to make an L position with my body, with my, my hips being in that 90 degree angle. I'm pushing into the top of the chair here. You can push into the wall and then move your hips back, move the inner thighs back and lift the outer armpits. So this might feel really good on the low back, depending upon where you might feel a little bit tight. So lifting the sitting bones up toward the sky, spinning the inner thighs back pushing into the wall or to the chair here, elongating the spine. Good, and walk yourself up. Let's sit back down on the chair or on the floor. And let's just do a quick hip opener here before we move all the way down. Um, crossing the right ankle over the left knee. This might be a nice posture for you. This looks the same if we did this on the floor. You can do it this way, or you can bend the bottom leg and walk your hips toward the heel, depending upon how tight your hips are. You've got some options here. In either case, I'm going to lift and separate the toes on the top foot that activates all the way up into the hip. Good and straighten your legs out. Push into the earth behind you or even into the chair. You can still straighten your legs, lifting the heart. And we're going to go to the other side, but maybe you notice the difference between your right and left hip. So again, if you're sitting in a chair, you cross the left ankle over the right knee. We're coming down here to the floor. You can stay with the right leg straight or bent. And then you decide how close your hip gets to your ankle pushing into the earth with your hands, lifting the heart, lifting and separating the toes on the left foot this time. 
and breathe wherever it feels tight for you, breathing into that space. So again, we're not forcing ourselves here, breathing in and out of that power center. Good, and release. So coming down to the floor, if it's possible for you to get here, crossing one leg over the other, grabbing the knees, and elongating the spine and start to come forward. Now, eventually the baby is gonna get in the way here if you're pregnant, but come wherever you can. And then let's switch to the other side. And again, you may notice that as a nice little easy hip opener. If your hips are already open, that might not feel like much here. Good. And then let's take both legs out to the side similar to what we were doing in an upright posture, but if you're pregnant, I want you to push into the earth behind you, lift and open the heart, lift the toes, press the heels down. That keeps us from hyperextending the legs. <sighs> Breathing in and out of the power center. So we're not forcing ourselves here. If you aren't pregnant and would like to come forward, the way we do that is keep uh, trying to extend the heart forward of us and not down to the ground, even looking out beyond, um, beyond center here. Even using the breath is a great way to check in with yourself. We inhale, lift, and exhale, lower, bending the elbows or reaching the arms out in front. But without curving the spine, we want to keep the spine nice and long and tall. And again, if you're pregnant, you're here still getting a nice opening through the inner thighs. It doesn't matter how far your feet are separated. Again, you don't want to force, right? Our power comes from uh, range of motion. So if you forced, you're probably creating restriction and that actually reduces our power. So especially um, in, in a pose like this, the, um, the, the pelvic floor, we want it to be lengthened, but we want it also to be strengthened. That's where the power comes from. So think about that in these postures, that um, if we force too much, we actually create um, a, a tighter situation, okay? So from this position, keep the right leg as it is, take the left foot into the right inseam, and the right hand down the right leg. Left arm can stay on the hip, as we start to rotate the right lung over toward the center, and then the left arm can come up and maybe start to lean over a little bit, but it can really uh, activate a lot in here, so just be mindful and go slowly, again, following the breath. Let the breath guide the way. And that may be just what you need here, grounding down through the left hip, Finding the opening that's ready for you without force. Good. Inhale and rise. Bring the soles of both feet together, pushing into the earth behind you. Notice how that helps you lengthen the spine. Maybe you push even so much into the earth that you can lift your hips slightly, flare them out, and then drop back down. So we're trying to force uh, face, sorry, <laughs> we're trying to get the groins to face the earth and that helps open the knees more readily to the floor, but we're not forcing the knees down, right? We're creating this alignment with the bones to create the opening without force. If that feels okay where you can stay upright and not collapse in the spine and you can reach around and grab your toes, that's fine. You can start to fold forward, but again, at some point the baby's gonna get in the way here, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Here the opening is coming into the, to the groin area even if you're upright, good. And then come on to the other side now. So the right, the left leg is long, right foot is into the inseam, left hand down the left leg and right arm up to the sky, push down through the right hip bone and elongate the whole right side of the body. And then maybe you start to, to tip over a little bit to the left, but we still stay grounded in the right hip. Letting the breath lead the way, inhale, Exhale. Good, and inhale back up. Go ahead and come down onto your side, and I'm gonna give you a couple props here. 
So let, resting on your left side, let's place the block down for our head and this bolster, or you could use a pillow in between your legs. I could even unfold this so it's between my ankles and my knees and I'm gonna lower myself down. So for a person in their third trimester, especially you don't wanna be on your back, um, but you, you know your body, if you're pregnant or not pregnant, find a comfortable place to be here to rest for a few, few moments. Taking your awareness deep inside of yourself, check in with your feet. Can you relax your feet anymore? Take that awareness up your legs, the lower leg, the upper leg, and into the hips. Can you relax your hips? Take that awareness up the spine, through the torso, up into the chest and the shoulders, the arms and the hands, to the neck, the jaw, can you keep your lips together but part your teeth? And can you remove the tongue from the roof of the mouth? Softening the eyes so they're gently closed but not forced. And then let the skin on the scalp relax, even relaxing the ears. here as long as you like. We're pressing the left hand into the earth and finding another comfortable seat so we can end our practice in a comfortable way. Again, if you want to stay lying down, feel free to stay there. But I offer you a blessing and thanksgiving for you being here today. And I, I just um, send blessings out to you and to your loved ones in this time of uncertainty and um, pray for our nation, pray for a positive and healthy 2021. Blessings.